gosh, I'm so sick. Ugh. Ugh. Hi you guys, it's Elena V and welcome back to my channel. If you're not already a part of this tight-knit community, be sure to hit that subscribe button and hit that ring bell notification so you'll always be notified as to when I upload a new video. So today in Idaho Matters, I bring to you the most important topics in regards to the first debate between gubernatorial candidates Paulette Jordan and Brad Little. I've had a long, long uh, pro-life uh, position and uh, that's that's been my position my entire uh, political career. Okay, Paula Jordan. Thank you first of all for the question. I'm gonna tell you that it's easy for a man to obviously state that he is pro-life. I am pro-life as a mother. You can see my two beautiful sons. However, I will tell you that as someone who is more independent and libertarian-minded in this regard, I believe that government should stay out of the lives of our women. That relationship should be held private when it comes to our medical provider. Women have our rights. We need to protect our individual rights to make sure that every woman here has not only access to reproductive health care, but ensure that their choice is defended. And I will firmly defend that right as governor. Thank you. Just a little response. Well, I, 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 my position is clear, uh, but I do support uh, anything we can do for women's health. But that, that right of, of, uh, that exists for that baby uh, to exist we have a series of laws in the state of Idaho uh, that, that have been implemented over years and, and those laws need to be enforced and, and continue to be in, un, in place. Kennedy Jordan, rebuttal. I think if our Lieutenant Governor states this position about being pro-life, then why has he not taken a position when it comes to the faith healing exemption law? We have many babies and children right now who are dying because we have people who believe that based on their faith, they have the right to not only ignore their children's health care, but allow them to die every year. Well, I've, I've worked on this issue for a long time. Uh, uh, health care issues are, are, since the Affordable Care Act, have become uh, very, uh, very complicated. I have committed over and over, in the primary and in the general, that I will comply with the will of the voters if, if the voters of Idaho use their uh, right that's embedded in our Constitution to pass a state law. When that law gets passed, there's going to have to be money appropriated and, and the law is going to be implement, have to be implemented and I've committed to do that. My opposition has made it clear that he is afraid to answer this question directly. I myself have been very clear that I firmly support as not only a champion and advocate, but I walk my talk. When I entered the legislature, and they told me that there were over 72,000 Idahoans without health care. I said, well, then I do not deserve health care. As a public servant, I refuse health care. Because if we are not willing to fight for every single citizen, every single Idahoan, for rights to access to not only affordable, but accessible health care, then we fail our people as not only representatives, but their elected officials. It takes time to build leadership. And right now, our people are dying, and they're asking for leadership. Nothing sets the hair on the back of my neck more than when they say that we're last. Uh, I've spent my entire career, even before I was in the Senate or Lieutenant Governor, going around and being involved in education policy. That ranking that everybody talks about where we're last is based on some items that our children, our parents, and our teachers have no control over. How much do we spend? Do we mandate pre-K? Uh, what's the ed educational attainment level of the parents? What matters in Idaho is how we're doing in the classroom. What are we doing to address these problems? The, if your child is a, is a student of uh, Idaho and they want to go on to college and they take the ACT test, your average score in Idaho is better than every surrounding state around us. Our, our reading scores, our math scores are all going up. Today, Idaho is the leading state in increasing teacher pay. Uh, granted, we started at a low level and we've got more work to do there, but to, to castigate, to, to criticize our teachers, our children, our parents that says that we're 50th, I categorically reject that. I stick to the facts. Everything that is uh, rating our education system has stated that Idaho is last in categorically everything. It's unfortunate because we as Idahoans deserve more, we deserve better. We are investing in our children by means of our current leadership, myself. But when you look at my predecessor and the Little Otter administration, they have divested in education over these many years. You're seeing larger classroom sizes, teacher ratios, teacher to student ratios, which have been 
more exceedingly unacceptable. And the challenge that I see is that many school districts, if you go to rural Idaho, many schools have opened up classrooms without teachers in those school rooms. And what's sad about that is I see that while we have a, an increasing population base, our system, our government has not met those impacts. We have rising costs with inflation. We have rising costs with enrollment increases. And yet we have done nothing more to ensure that education funding is increased to support not only the infrastructure, but teacher pay, which needs to be competitive, not last in the nation, and ensure that our citizens, our young people, have access to the best resources to be as innovative as possible, which is why we need to promote more STEM, look at what the future of work looks like, and start catching up our education system to meet the needs of our children so that they can compete into the broader world market. Thank you. Well, being that I've already taken progressive action to say that we need to start by decriminalizing cannabis in the state of Idaho and save our state $23 million, and pull our people out of the private prison contract system that we've already developed, wasting money, wasting taxpayer resources, it's about time that we make smarter investments. And right now we have states all around us, including Canada, all of our borders are legalizing cannabis, whether it's recreational or medicinal. I myself, as a leader of Idaho, have heard people. We have people who are suffering and want alternative medicines. On top of that, we would not only be able to generate another revenue source via this tax and by regulation, but we're going to allow our people to live a freer life that would help them in their medicinal needs. So I firmly support expansion to legalize medicinal cannabis in our state to allow our folks that access to a natural medicine. Thank you. These children that have uh, these epileptic seizures that we, that we have got addressed, and matter of fact, the FDA just uh, in the last two or three weeks have finalized uh, the availability of that product. That narrow cannabis oil uh, that's available for those kids, and we know it works because we, we ha Idaho was one of the test states where we provided that product. I've met some of those parents. I've seen the incredible uh, help that it's been. But the issue, if you go to the surrounding states where recreational ma marijuana is legalized, and you see what's happening to those states, you talk to those state leaders, you talk to what's happened to their social, uh, their social safety net what's happened in all kinds of areas. I am adamantly opposed to recreational marijuana. Now, medical marijuana, if, it's, if we know what the product is, and it doesn't exacerbate our ability to enforce drug, drug laws to stop drug trafficking, I think there's an opening. There's a, an initiative in Utah, but there's also a bill that's significantly different than the initiative, so we'll, we will see what happens in Utah, but I am categorically against recreational marijuana. All right, so let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Again, I'm Elena V, and thank you for watching. Bye.